Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. And in today's video, we're going to focus on setting a default value inside of a Power Apps form. So stay tuned. Hi, hey, welcome back. This is the fifth video in our series on Power Apps portals. And in our previous video, we set up a web form to, to, uh, to input a new financial aid request from students. In this video, we'll focus on a few things. Specifically, in our previous video when we were looking at this, we want to see Bubba Smith, in this case, listed as our student that's actually making this request. So that's happening through other means, and we'll show that in a moment. The other thing we'll notice that uh, first thing we want to do is to do this is we'll go over to make.powerapps.com. We'll then go over to the portal management application. And inside that portal management application, we will, oh, wrong application, there we go. We'll go to our web form. Now, that web form we created in our previous video called New Financial Aid in Application. Okay, and in our last video, we covered the difference between entity forms and web forms. We're no longer using entity forms because a web form is kind of superseding that in our case. So let's go ahead and select that. You'll notice it's starting on general info. So let's go to web form steps, go to general info, make sure you select general info and not this other one to the left. All right, and we can see a few things here. First of all, when I go to form definition, that you'll see associate with current portal user down here. This is how when I save the box right now, how it's automatically associating this application with Bubba Smith right now. By checking that box and saying, okay, when you save this, go ahead and set the current portal user uh, in the student field, essentially. So that's what, that's just doing it right now. But let's imagine you want to actually show that. So again, right now, it's automatically, as it kind of run through the form, uh, I will also, I'll just hit next, next, next. Here we go, next, and, and submit. That's how it's associating Bubba Smith. And when I go over to financial aid, we now have five of these versus four of these. So that's the first thing. But what if you wanted to actually display the value right here instead? Okay, so essentially the same thing, but one's happening after the save, one's happening before the save. So let's take a look at that first. Okay, so to do that, what we're gonna do is we have to go to related and metadata. Okay, the metadata gives you, it's kind of a little hidden here in this web form step, and it gives you a whole lot of like little hidden things you can do on this web form. So I'm gonna hit new web form metadata. Now, once you do this, you get a whole bunch of really goodness here that, that are pretty slick, slick options. Later, we're gonna use this thing called a subgrid to, um, uh, for some other, other nifty stuff for doing attachments and all that. But for the time being, we're gonna focus on the attribute one. In other words, a, a, a column inside of your power, power Dataverse table. So which attribute do you wanna manage? Well, I wanna manage the student attribute. Okay, there it is right there. So in this form, I wanna manage that attribute. Now this, this web form metadata allows you to override nearly anything inside this form. It also allows you to put descriptions on, on things. You can put but, extra button uh, controls, all sorts of, it actually allows you to change like yes, no, yes, no's to like multi uh, check boxes, all sorts of good things you can do inside of here. But in our case, what we wanna do is very, very simple. I'm gonna pre-populate a field. The type is gonna be, look at that, we have a certain value you wanna set it to. You can set it to today's date, which is pretty common uh, use case, and also the current portal user. That's perfect. I'm gonna use a current portal user, which means I can then skip this step right here. And where do you wanna get that portal user from? I wanna get it from the, uh, it's already pulling it over, so it knows your contact table, and I'm looking for a contact in my case. Contact is a contact ID, there it is, perfect. So that, that contact is a contact ID, the primary key from the contact table. And you'll notice now, we also, though, this could be used for setting a first name or a last name column, for example. We use this pretty frequently for those kind of, an email address. All those can be pulled from the contact table and placed in any column you wish that this this way. All right, so that's, that's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and hit the save button. I'm not gonna save and close quite yet. I just wanna kind of see what happens when we do this. And let's go back and do a hard refresh on this and let's see what happens. Okay, now in this case, you notice it's not, has it not refreshed the metadata. So let's go ahead and hit the browse website to kind of push the new metadata out here and you know, flush and load the data metadata. 
And there we go. It's refreshing now. And this is the, the fun part here, right? As it goes through, and there we go. So now you have the value in here. Now, in reality, this was not required, right? We didn't have to put Bubba Smith in here uh, because it's already happening on save. Again, let me show you what that last property is that we did in the first video just to kind of reemphasize that. Uh, back on that previous screen that we were in, okay, so let's see here, go back to the uh, go back to the financial aid application. And on this previous screen under, um, under oop, right here, excuse me, under general info, you'll see under form options, that we already had, form definition, excuse me, right here, we're already associating this to a current user. That's, that's the other way of doing it, okay? Now, alternatively, you could have the user search for a record and do it that way. So I could have them go through and search for this record. To do this, they need to have entity permissions set up on this contact table. So we can create some kind of global permission that allows them to actually read these records out if you want them to see all the students, for example. So if I want, let's imagine, for example, this was a listing of all the, all the uh, classes they can take, for example, and not the contacts. If I want them to be able to see all those, now, now it doesn't make sense in this example, but if, it do, if, it, if I did want them to see all that, what we would simply do is we would go over to our portal management app, here it is, and we'll go to entity permissions, and we'll create some type of permission that lets them see all the records in a certain entity. So I'll just call this like contact global in this case, this will be a temporary thing, so I'm not gonna keep this turned on. Uh, I'll then go over to uh, contacts, there we go. And it's for this website here. And for this scope, it's gonna be global this time, meaning it applies to, to everybody in this certain group. You can do whatever you want. I'm gonna do read writes, so I can actually see all the data, and then I can be able to update it. I'll save it. I'll then go ahead and give them a web role. Okay, waiting for that to save. I'll hit add existing web role and associate that with students, and then hit add. And then hit save one more time. Okay, so it's saying that if you're in the student role, that you can read all the records from the contact table. That's all this is saying. So because it's global, it, it applies to anybody in that web role. So it's not being selective about what records you can see. Remember before I showed you in the last video that you can be selective by, by specifying, you know, hey, a certain co uh, contact level rights or global rights or uh, account rights. So now after I do that, I might be able to refresh this. Let's see, I'll hit a hard refresh, hit this. Oh, no, let me go ahead and do that, browse again. Sometimes it lets you do that. Depends on the, the cache. All right, let's browse that again. Hit this button right here, and there we go. Now we can see a listing of the students. Oh, that was weird. There we go. Uh, now we can see a listing of students. Now in this case, we would not want to use, you know, show all of our students to our students, but if you were showing a listing of classes, for example, or a listing of, of whatever else from a different entity that might be applying here, uh, like select what teacher you want, or what house you want to, you want to stay in in our college, those things might make sense to apply global rights to, okay? So that's where you would use that if you wanted to also. But in our case, it's not really needed because we already have this as our default. Now, now that we've done that, we can actually hide this record now. We, we don't really need this, this anymore in there. As a matter of fact, we could have hid this in our last example because um, we already had it set on save to associate with the current portal user. So let's do our last step is actually hiding that. So I'm gonna go back to our solution. I'll go back to our student aid application. I'll go back to our form. And then I have this portal web form that I have. And I'm gonna hide two fields here. I can see, for example, that it doesn't make sense likely to show the award aided because that's what's gonna be used for by the back office team. And it doesn't make sense to show the student. I don't want them to specify that. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'll go ahead and hide this. I'll go ahead and delete that, excuse me. And I'll go ahead and also uh, delete this student as well. Okay, I'll then hit save. Publish. Now we could have also made it read only or locked it or done a whole bunch of other things here, but they know who they are, right? They don't need to see their own student record there. So after I do that, I should be able to hard refresh this. Oh, I have to go ahead and do the browse again. There we go. Hopefully that point's published now. Hit the browse again. Again, the browse process is, is purging all the cache, reloading it, and then it gives me back this record right here after it refreshes. There we go, look at that. So now if I go ahead and say fall, term, whatever, hit next, hit whatever, hit submit, and we have off to the races. So now we should have our at least our sixth application, probably more than that at this point. Let's take a look. 
All right, there we go. There's Bubba Smith, and that was as of a few minutes ago. Uh, so perfect, works great. And we can go ahead and delete these records, of course, by hitting our delete key there. So we'll show you more about how we changed the look and feel of these in our last video in the series. But this is showing you now how to set default values and how do you uh, on, on save or during display time of the form as well. So hope you're enjoying this video series on Power Apps Portals. In our next video, we're actually gonna walk through how we go through and uh, attach files to this, this process as well. So stay tuned for that video. That'll be number six in our series where we're gonna actually have people attach their tax forms to this, uh, to this form that you're seeing uh, right here. But thank you so much for watching this video. This is part of the classes that we teach here at Pragmatic Works. Uh, you'll find us at pragmaticworks.com. Additionally, both, please feel free to subscribe. I'd love, love to, so you can find out future videos that we're bringing like this around the Power Apps platform. Thanks a lot and take care.